I sat among the piles of dirty laundry just strewn throughout our bedroom, I was overwhelmed. I had no idea how to manage motherhood, our marriage, our home, work, friends, family. It seemed as though everything was falling apart. I was going through the motions, floating along, hoping that I would end up somewhere that I needed to be, trusting that God would in fact carry me where he wanted me to be. I asked for help, but everyone seemed to be just as overwhelmed keeping house as I did. Doesn't everyone move piles of laundry from the bed to the couch and the couch to the bed and back and forth every day? Doesn't everyone have too many pairs of shoes to count between a family of five? There had to have been at least 50. Isn't everyone trying to decide what to do with that set of china from their grandmother that they don't ever seem to use, but just feels wrong to part with? As I sat there, I began to wonder, isn't this what life is just like? In the months leading up to this dark night of the soul, fueled by stray socks and toys all over the floor, our Sunday school class was studying the book of Leviticus. And we had been talking about how everything, every day, was centered around the Israelites' relationship with God and with each other. Meanwhile, I was also teaching a Bible study on coveting, which admittedly was a problem I just did not think I struggled with. God was using these two ideas to really prick my heart, and it was breeding in me this level of discontentment that I just did not know what to do with. After all, if I'm spending more time in God's Word, shouldn't I be able to better hold the tension between the world and the life of a Christian? Everything just seemed to be getting worse. Something had to give. I turned on YouTube in the hopes of finding yet another organizing system that was different than the countless ones I had tried before. Maybe if I got things better organized, I'd be able to devote more time to Bible study and prayer, and I could start to feel better about our situation. Maybe that was the issue. Maybe I just wasn't spending enough time with God to make all of these things work. The first video seemed more overwhelming than what I was dealing with, so I reluctantly went on to the next video to hear some good news. I was desperately longing to hear some good news. The title was The Laundry System That Changed My Life. This spunky gal came on the screen with her Midwest accent and her laundry room looked very different than my own. She introduced herself and then started saying some things that I had been thinking about my own laundry situation. She went on to make the promise that having laundry done in one Saturday morning was actually possible. And my first thought was, you're crazy. And my second thought was, sign me up. Step one was to pare down, which felt really weird considering all of the other organizing systems I had looked at started with, get a few bins and maybe some more laundry baskets or put a hamper in this place or that place to catch all of the dirty laundry. This was a radically different idea. Then things got really weird when she said that she could probably have gone an entire month without doing laundry. Yeah, that was me. As I looked around the room, I knew that we had way more than we could deal with. That was all I needed. I switched gears and went to the video she recommended about reducing clothes in 10 minutes. It hit me. We don't need more organization. We need less stuff. And when she said, did you know that you don't really need all of this stuff? Well, that was all I needed. Things really took a turn. I gathered up all of our clean laundry, all of our dirty laundry, all of our hampers and the laundry baskets, the things that were scattered throughout the house. I gathered it all up in one place. I quickly realized that if all of our kids' clothes were dirty, I could have up to 14 loads of laundry to do. That's two solid loads with no repeated loads every single day for a week. And just one of our boys had 42 pairs of underwear. I will never forget counting out all of those pairs of underwear just for one kid. Of course, this is why we were so backed up with laundry. I really could go a month. And because I was touching it every day, trying to move it from one spot to another or digging through the piles looking for clothes, I felt like I was dealing with my laundry every single day. 
but I wasn't actually doing the work that needed to be done to get all of that laundry moved through the process. Now, how we got into this predicament is a much longer story than what I can share here. And I'm happy to link some of those earlier videos on YouTube, although they are a little cringy, friends. They're certainly not as polished as I have become now five years later. But I very quickly realized that something radical needed to happen. I didn't need just a change. I needed a radical and complete overhaul of what we were doing with our lives. So that's just what I did. I reduced our kids' clothes down to 10 outfits for the week, 10 pairs of underwear, 10 pairs of socks, three pairs of shoes, and seven pairs of pajamas. I put all the excess in bins and tucked them away in their closets, and we lived like that for several weeks, and it felt like a miracle. That was all I needed. I was hooked, and I began binge watching any and all videos that the minimal mom had on her channel at that time. I joined her mentorship group, and I gradually worked my way over the next year through every single room in our home, except for the garage, because, well, Sometimes you just have to stay in your own lane. As I worked my way through our home, I was reminded of something my pastor had shared a few years earlier. It was little more than a pamphlet called My Heart, Christ's Home by Robert Boyd Munger. I'd like to read a portion of that for you now. One evening, I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. What an entrance he made. It was not a spectacular, emotional thing, but very real. Something happened at the very center of my life. He came into the darkness of my heart and turned on the light. He built a fire in the hearth and banished the chill. He started music where there had been silence. He filled the emptiness with his own loving, wonderful fellowship. I have never regretted opening the door to Christ, and I never will. In the joy of this new relationship, I said to Jesus Christ, Lord, I want this heart of mine to be yours. I want you to settle down here and be perfectly at home. Everything that I have belongs to you. Let me show you around. The more I was going through the rooms in my home and the more I was thinking about the structure of this writing as Robert Munger carries you throughout every room of the home, I too was having my own overhaul in every room of my home. At the time that I first encountered this writing, we were house hunting and I had scores and scores of homes saved, but there was one in particular that just seemed to stick. I just loved it. And whenever I read these passages, I envisioned that house. Of course, because they were real estate pictures, the house was spotless, well-decorated with minimal furnishings, and it felt warm and inviting. As I read through these passages, I would envision myself sitting on the couch in that living room from the picture, having time with Jesus and having that conversation every day. When I thought about Jesus cleaning out the closets of my heart, I envisioned that closet at the top of the stairs in those real estate photos. It really wasn't until I started decluttering our own home that I made the true connection between the changes that were happening in my heart and the changes that were happening in our home. In the first year of our family minimalism journey, I decluttered every room in our home. Two storage units, sentimental items, kitchen items, clothes, home decor, pictures, furniture, office items, and electronics. The list went on and on. No category in our home was safe. But something else was happening as I worked our way through our home. I was considering how I thought about our physical belongings in our house, how I was spending my time, and what I was actually doing in my free time, the very little of it I felt like I had. How much time was being devoted to the things that were actually contributing to my faith and family in a positive way? And as I looked around our home, I wondered what Jesus would want to remove from my home if he were to walk in and have the same kind of encounter that we see in my heart, Christ's home. Living in the world as a Christian is hard. Even with the best support systems, a vibrant church life, a great therapist, and financial resources, we will endure suffering, trials, and challenges. Marketing tells us that we have needs and that this or that product can fill them. 
We see people's lives displayed on social media, which by the way, is not a new thing. Social media has given us access to those pictures, so to speak, in a different way, but we have all gone into someone else's home or observed someone else's life from a distance or maybe even close up and thought, she's so good at decorating, I could never make my house look like this. Or their family pictures are so well put together. How does she come up with outfits that all match like that? I could never do that. We all want to put on a pretty face and in the process, we can gather up quite a few things. Now, five years later, our home isn't perfect. It certainly isn't as decluttered as it has been in the past, but the changes in my heart have been far more lasting. I'd love to share more with you about those changes and how we live in our home day to day and even do some more decluttering with you. So if you would, I'd love for you to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, maybe even share it with a friend who you too know needs maybe a whole house decluttering and and not just with our physical belongings. Thanks so much for watching, and until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight. Oh, and if you wanna see more videos like this, you can click the link right up here.